Hey guys, Lizardly here for Lark's Foot Crochet Afghan Blanket, whatever it was, day two. Um, here is it folded in half. Um, I haven't really, I was hoping to work on it during the week and it just got, it got so busy that I had to wait until the weekend. So, it's the weekend, I'm, I'm gonna crochet now, I almost said cross stitch. Can you tell I usually cross stitch? <laughs> All right. So David and I finished the finale for Peaky Blinders a week ago, a week and a half ago. Pretty recently, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> so my timeline's a little messed up because I've been super, 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 super sick. I'm finally starting to feel better. I've got meds that are helping, so that's nice. I think. I think it was last week because we finished it before I got sick so yeah it had to have been last week whatever it doesn't matter not sick anymore woohoo yeah um my favorite character if you have seen the show okay straight up we're just gonna do spoilers right yeah this is season six of Peaky Blinders so we've talked about the show before so we're just starting right on season six if you haven't seen it I'd recommend it uh the first two seasons are really good uh the rest are still good. I don't think they're as great. Um, it's got good moments. Um, it's, you know, British mob show. It's actually interesting because it's probably the only... Yeah, this is like the only gangster show you like. I mean, have we watched another gangster well, show? Well, like everything else I've ever shown you that doesn't have good characters as protagonists you hate. This is true. This is the only one where they are objectively not good people, um, but they... I mean, they they're have, morally gray, but yeah, like, I would say they're in the gray. They're not evil. Eh, even even then, I'd be like, they're just less evil than some of the people around them, or they're See? doing it for good reasons. But they do some evil junk, mm. like pretty freaking evil. So whatever. That's um, what I was saying. We're gonna spoil the crud out. Of yes, it. if you guys have been watching the show, you know the actress for Polly had passed away before they started filming. She was my favorite character. And, and and she died in real life and in the show so i'm sorry that was my fault my bad yeah i loved aunt polly so much yeah. she was so just awesome yeah. and she did not put up with anybody's crap. she was definitely one of the best things about the show um because she was a very well written female character because she just fits a real, well there's some ups and some downs and how well she's written but no she she's kind of unique yeah, especially in mobster movies and shows because she's definitely not the head of the family but like she gets decisions she's one of the only ones who she's like alternate power behind the throne because even though Tommy's the head of the family she's one of the only people who Can could influence like him? jerk his chain and say no you're out of line Oh, yeah. You know, and it's a very interesting dynamic, and she's a very smart and competent woman. Season two, she has some wonderful, like, there's just a lot of really wonderful moments for her of, like, yes, victory or revenge or anything. And just, like, it's, she was a great character and a great actress, and it's really a tragedy. It's um, pretty graphic. Like, they're kind Oh, of, it's extremely graphic. Yes. They, they... they did they get Peaky Blinders because of their hats and the razors they kept in them? Is that... Yeah, I believe. Yeah, so they have those English hats. I don't know what else to call them. Caps. They're Is like those cap? old-fashioned caps. And they have, you know, like a little rim at the yeah. front. Yeah. And they would sew blades into them so they could take off their hat and slice somebody up. Especially so like, in their yeah, eyes. Yeah, the, the rough version for this, for anyone who hasn't delved into it, obviously... In Britain, guns were not nearly as big of a thing as they are in America, so a lot of, like, it was an immediate, like, major problem to even get your hands on a gun and could be massively, a massive crime if you were found with one. Um, so a lot of street weaponry and gang weaponry was, like, blunt instruments, cautious, things like that. And so, yeah, sewing sharp objects into the rim of your cap was a common thing because you always wore a cap back then. And the idea that you could take it off and swing it at people, you just grab the cat by the back and start swinging at people, and now you've got a knife that's always on you and not obvious. You know, it's yep. not, 
you know, you don't have to reach into your pocket or something. You know, you know, it might not be dropped. It's not like obviously a blunt instrument. It's oh, this is my cap, and then you know, there's a razor blade sewn into the edge, and so when you hit someone with it, it can take their eye out. Yep. Yeah. So, hooray for the interesting British weaponry tangent. Um, but yeah, uh, so they're a Romani gang, um, and it all starts, like, I'm a quick recap of season one, it all starts when Tommy comes back from World War One along with his brothers, uh, the women have been running the gang while they're gone, and he's like, okay, I'm back, and he is ambitious, uh, he's no longer happy to just be a street gang, and it goes from there, so spoilers from here on out, um, mm. Obviously, part of the problem with Peaky Blinders, for those of you who are current, is I feel like it's a it it doesn't have the grace to not constantly raise the stakes at the end of every season. Um, you know, at the end of the first season, he's just trying to expand. At the end of the second season, he's now like running like major things. By the end of the third season, he's elected to parliament. You know, like it's just it's getting ridiculous. It's like, oh, cool! I can't wait like for four more seasons of this where he's fighting the Gurren Logging characters over the fate of galaxies. You know. Um, because they just can't deal with having it move slower. Supernatural complex? What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's and That's said, coming from a fan, all right? It does some good stuff. And season six, the, the, the capstone of season five was Tommy finally lost and didn't know why. Because he was trying to stop these fascists who were, um literal fascists because originally when they made the show they wanted it to start with the end of world war one and end with the sirens for the air raids of world war two starting as like a cool oh. artistic capstone don't know if that's the plan anymore um and it, it seems like it would feel kind of silly but like there's a lot of good arcs going through season five about how like you know, we just had a world war and now these jerks are back and, like, they're the same kind of people and they're dangerous and they're deadly and blah, 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 blah. But they're smarter than him and they outsmart him. Well, they don't really outsmart him. It's that he's willing to be suspicious of every character, but he's always trust family. But it's finally gotten to the point where family can't be trusted because one of his family members is an idiot. Oh, and, yeah. You know, because it's, it's sort of showing the whole, like, well, yeah, we grew up in war and misery, so we know how to trust each other and keep our mouths shut. And this new kid, you know, he didn't grow up in the middle of all this junk. He wasn't there for that. And so he's way too trusting and stupid. And, you know, he's enjoying living the rich life, not making sure he keeps it and blabs. And so blabs his whole plan. Person. <laughs> and that gets one of his friends killed, who he was sacrificing anyways. Um, Abarama Gold killed, who is a great character played by the guy who played Littlefinger in Game of Thrones, which was a shame. And then, because she passed away between seasons, Polly. Polly killed, which is how they write it in. Which was a clever way to do it, to their credit. They didn't, like, oh, she crashed on a plane! Like, it was... I'm sure they had to rewrite the script because of it, because it vastly changes motives to lose such an important character. They were going to have to adjust it, but it works. And this is now four years later, because... Tommy has been biding his time, basically. Because, of course, he's going to get revenge for this. It's not, that's, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that's his plan. Oh, yeah, um, no. If they, did, if they didn't avenge her, I would be so angry with yeah, this show. It's, 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 <laughs> like, if, you're, if you've watched five seasons of this and you don't know he's planning on still getting vengeance even four years later, you, I don't know what you watched. Yeah. Um, so, uh, basically, that's what this season focuses on. They, um... They um. I like when they um. Um, I like when they are. What do they do? They're basically, it's a lot of like, he's now forced to work with the IRA because they're who betrayed him, or part of who betrayed him, and they're keeping him under his thumb. He's dealing with politics, he's dealing with wife stuff. There's a lot of plot going on in this one that doesn't need to be there. It's very inelegant. Um, you know, I can deal with the plot. My biggest gripe with this season was there was so much music that did not fit the tone, and I didn't care. They never once, until the very end, played uh, Red Right Hand, which was the intro song for the previous, what, five seasons? Yes. And then suddenly they only play it at the end, and they use a terrible woman's voice that does not fit. So I hated it. I hated it. I believe season four and five got made fun of because 
one of the stylistic things the show loves to do is like showing them walking through like a dirty area of Britain in the dark with like sparks flying while some cool music plays and it got it was really cool early on but then they started using it like every single episode and it started becoming like well it's almost a joke now or like what's Tommy doing he's getting the newspaper why are we playing the music like it just felt silly um and so I think they whiplashed on that and decided to change it up and they still use the music just as much but now it's a different type of music it's more modern and I weird. I hated and it. It did not fit whatsoever. So I'll say slightly I get kind of that there's like maybe a stylistic choice of like trying to show just how warped his whole world has become because everything's falling apart. Mm. But yeah, there's a lot of this where it makes me wonder if there was another showrunner or if someone else got their hands behind the camera, if someone passed the reins because like there's some weird shots done later in the show that they've never done before and they're kind of some of them work, some of them really don't. Yeah. It's There are stylistic choices for season Like, if, if this was like, hey, someone passed the reins to someone else who's up and coming, like, meh, whatever. It could have been a lot worse, I'll straight say. True. I like, I still like that. the season for before we go. Oh, yeah, forward. I enjoyed the show. I'm not, I don't regret watching it. I just don't know if I'll ever re-watch it. Yeah, I would probably re-watch it still. Maybe? It's, I'd say know. it's better than I feel like the first couple stuff. of seasons I would, but I don't know. So, I will it say. It always did. It's not fair. Of all the various stuff going on, um, it pretty much just winds up being kind of a mess because they, uh, well, I, I guess there's no way to talk about this anymore without spoiling season six as well. So if you want to watch season six and you're like, oh, I didn't know Peaky Blinders season six was out or mob, if you're listening, turn it oh, off. Yeah, turn it off. How we dare have you? to finish the show first. We're going to say stuff about <laughs> things. This is your chance. You haven't turned Mute it off it. yet, have you? You want to know, right? Then watch the show, Mom. Watch the show. <laughs> so anyways. Um, gotta win the arguments when you can. Um, <laughs> oh, they throw so much into this season. They we really have do. Oh the my fascist angle. We have the IRA angle. We have the Lizzie angle. The Lizzie angle. We have the, the daughter angle. angle. We have the uncle angle. Ah. We have the new kid angle. Oh yeah, that was that, that was felt weird. Re- that to it me was... felt really inelegant. Like I am really wondering if they'd already shot some of the season and they needed to rework stuff, or like maybe they'd already hired him because they had plans, and then po- the actress who played Polly died, and they were like, "Well, we need to rework this." Because it feels really shoehorned in. And I think to his credit, he does a good job with a crack roll. Because it just makes... It's like, really? Why are we doing this? We have more than enough going on. Mm. This feels incredibly weird. He does not need to be here. Like, what got me was just that Tommy just immediately believed it. Mm. There, there was I thought like, that was going to be part of the point. So, to, to, Oh, what, to, and then have him not be his real son? So, like, here's the big thing that's going on. Tommy's dying. It turns out, like, first he loses his kid, and he's dying because he's got uh, tuberculoma, which is when you get tuberculosis in the lower part of your brain. So he's lost Polly. He goes to do the Romani stuff, and his daughter dies while he's not there because he's still worried about the curse of the Sapphire from previous seasons. And so he's basically falling apart, and he's on the, like, well, I need to set everyone up and right my wrongs. And he goes to this Romani woman who, you know, was telling him about the curse of the sapphire and who it was passed to and how she placed a curse. And I was seriously wondering if the whole point of that arc was he's fallen so far, even his own people are going to be scamming him and he's not going to notice because everyone else is kind of screwing him in some ways. And I thought that's what this was going to be. And then, oh, well, you lost a daughter. Well, by the way, here's this son you didn't know you had. And... He kind of looks like Tommy, but, like, he just accepts it. And I really thought the point was going to be that there was going to be a moment where he finds out this kid isn't really his son, either because of a major betrayal or, like, a light betrayal where he's like, well, you're not my son, but I'm not going to kill you or kick you out, but you're not really a Shelby. But to just kind of wake him up and go, yeah, I'm getting screwed by everyone. I need to be me even if everything's falling apart because I'm not helping anyone. But, spoiler... As far as we can tell, no, it's this kid. That, here's another kid. Like, Shelby, number five, like, go. 
And it's yeah, just... like, it, I don't know, it killed me because, like, their daughter was, like, what, six years old? Something like that. And this replacement is, looks like he's in his 20s, like... He's supposed to be, like, 15, 16, isn't he? He looked way older than that. Wow, he did not to me. He's short. That, that means nothing. Uh, My grandma looks... is under five feet no, tall. <laughs> he does not... Okay, hold on. Um, we'll he, I up. thought he came across as way older. I don't know. No, he... Uh, Shelby. Okay, something. well, I'm looking sure. it up right now. Charles Shelby. No, that's the wrong one. Reveal surprise, Shelby. Blah, 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 blah. Secret son. Duke. Yeah, that was his name, wasn't Duke. it? Duke. Look at that. You're telling me that's 20s? Okay, from right here in this angle, not so much. But... Okay. I'm, I'm still, well, you know what, I would go with early he 20s. He is a 22-year-old actor, for what it works. I just said early 20s. Yeah. So you know what, I'm taking a, this as a win. Yeah, Tom Holland's what, like 55? Um, I'm kidding, but he looks young even for that his age. That is quite rude, sir. That's major You're mocking compliment. me. No, you're mocking me. You think Tom Holland looking 55 years old is a compliment? No, I'm saying that Tom Holland looks young and is 55. He plays a teenager in movies and is not actually a teenager. Okay, I'm thinking of the wrong person. Who is Tom Holland? Spider-Man. He's like late teens, early 20s. I know. He's st That was the joke, that he just looks way younger than he is. He's. I know he's... Uh, okay, side quest! I'm so confused, you guys. Tom Holland is 26. He plays a 15-year-old. Yeah, he's 26 now. Yes, and he last... Avengers came out pre-COVID. Last year, he played, what, an 18-year-old? He looks young for his age. It was a joke. He's probably always going to look fairly young. He is 26. He's probably not suddenly going to look like, you know... Okay, you're getting off track. This yeah. is irrelevant. You made a weird joke. I didn't get it. It doesn't matter. So... But that's the How old did they, did they, did they, they never said his name. No. They just said back in the day he slept with somebody. No, they give you 19 years old. All right. I said early 20s. I'm still taking that. I would have thought he was like 17, but yeah. Okay. You said 16. Six, 16, 17, yeah. <laughs> Looking at that picture there, I was like a little older. So he's older than I thought. But either way, I swear to God, he's so short. Um, or maybe everybody else around him is just really tall. They're not. Anyways... <laughs> We go and get this new character. It makes no sense. He's a mess. It, 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 well, I mean, he's not a total mess. It's just like, it's just shoving someone in there where it's like, this could literally be anyone else. Yeah. There I... are like plenty of other characters you could have had do these things because he brings literally nothing to the table in the plot. The actor is great. Again, oh, it's yeah. not his fault. I just... um, it's just a weird decision. So again, getting this all back on track, I'm wondering if he was like, hired and then she died and they were like oh we're gonna have to cut your part because we're doing this or if they got less episodes it's only a six episode season yep i feel like the previous seasons were longer but in fact let's confirm something right now um peaky blinders movie i believe they're confirmed yes they are making a movie to wrap it up okay so and i just want to check something season Five episodes. How long was season five? Was it really six episodes? I thought they all were about six episodes. Apparently they are. I just... This one felt short. And I think it's I mean, because we, they just... We finished it in, what, two, three days? It's not. That's why. It's just it feels like nothing happened in it. And it's because, in a way, nothing did. Like, Tommy is sad. Things are wrong. Tommy is sad. Things are wrong. Tommy is sad. Things are wrong. And then the end. And... Sorry, I just remembered what I wanted to talk about. You could finish, though. I should mention that the other big thing is that Michael has been living in America. Michael is the son of Polly, and he blames Tommy for Polly's death, because they were already coming to a head anyways. Mm. So there's a big conflict there. And Michael is married to or dating a girl who is the son of a senator slash gangster who is, I believe, based off of Kennedy, from what I read. Um, named Uncle Jack, I believe, mm -hmm. was it? Something. Uh, yeah, oh, and he, um, he's kind of the, another, you know, villain of the season, because you've got him, you've got the fascists, you've got the IRA, there's a lot of knives in the air, as always. So what were you going to say? Uh, can I spoil the ending? Because I wanted ending? to talk about me calling that before he looked at the newspaper. Okay, yeah, let me, let me get there. <laughs> so... 
as we go through the season, the basic beats are everything's falling apart for Tommy. He loses his daughter. He loses his wife because um, Lizzie yeah, leaves and, him. and the son goes with her. And, and his son. Um, but he's trying to do right by all of them by setting some stuff up before he dies. Um, uh, Arthur finds out that he's dying because uh, Arthur's not always incompetent. Arthur does okay, but they always do what Ar- they do with Arthur. He starts out a mess, and by the end, he gets someone back who helps him not be a mess, and I'm sure they'll make him a mess before the start of the I movie. hope not. I adored him. I don't want him to die. Oh, I have meds to take. Keep talking. What's that noise? What noise? You don't hear a zzz. Oh, yes, I do. Pause, please. Fine, I'll take my meds so you guys don't have to hear me choking on them. I didn't choke on my meds. Okay, so we're back, right? Yes. Okay, so, sorry, not the important. Point is, uh, the basic arc is lose a kid, um, find a son, uh, Learns you're dying. Learn he has tuberculosis or whatever. Learn you have a tuberculoma, Tuber- you're dying. Uh. And he, he got a second opinion and was told the same thing. Yeah, they both agree he's dying. Um, and he, and it's inoperable. Yeah, and then, like, everyone hates him. But we're going to do this to make the family better, blah, 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 blah. And the main villain is this Uncle Jack. Because he's making deals with Uncle Jack to ship a bunch of heroin to the U.S. Um, But Uncle Jack is going to work with the fascists um, because he wants to see fascists in power in Europe um, and the IRA and betray Tommy and kill him. Uh, And he's going to use Michael to do it. So... The big denouement is they go down there, they're going to use a car bomb to kill Tommy, um, and Tommy, once again, is one step ahead and swaps the car bomb uh, to the other car, blows them up, kills them. Does he kill Uncle Jack in that? Not to my knowledge. Uncle Jack doesn't die. He's alive in the end. Yeah. So they don't even kill him, and then they shoot Michael. He shoots Um, Michael in the eye. Yeah, in the eye. He does it himself. Um, and then at the same time, or no, before that, same time, something like that, uh, Finn is banished from the family, and his friend Billy, who betrayed them, is killed. Um, which was, you know, you all saw that coming. Uh, frankly, quite civilly, considering... They, they said, they did a weird thing, they were like, make sure the first two in the chamber were empty, because they do this weird, like, gambit where they give him the gun so he oh, can Oh yeah, he shoots them. twice, and then he stops. And I feel like I need to research what kind of gun that was, because I would have sworn that was a semi-automatic, and that doesn't make any freaking sense. Um, It might have been some type of Luger, and that then suddenly makes sense or something, but, like, that's sort of like playing Russian roulette with a semi-automatic, where, like, it doesn't work that way. That You don't... I mean, in their universe, that's how it worked, so... I, it just, I thought it was a really weird oversight, or maybe it's a really interesting call-out to some technology, so I want to see what's going on there. Um, and it's also a dumb overthought plan. Anyways, like, oh, we, like, it should have just been, yeah, the entire clip was empty, and then he pops in a new clip. Why would you give him a gun that's only partially full? The whole thing is weird. Um, so finally, from there, he wanders off into the, you know, having given Alfie, uh, control of New Jersey, I think, or whatever, um, and he's going to wander off into the forest to travel as a Romani and then eventually kill himself. And then Liz, you wanted to mention that you called what I'm about to say. So you want to expand on that or oh. try to spoil it first? Well, I mean, like he, he's literally about to shoot himself. And then he looks out of the wagon he's in, and he sees his daughter. Which, so David and I were like, oh, he just shot himself. Which, for the record, this is where I talk about really good cinematography, because if that had been the ending, that was really well done. Like, that's a really way... Like, given that this show is so willing to show violence and sadness, a super clever way to do the suicide was he literally points the gun at his head, says the line he always says in the bleak midwinter, and then suddenly he hears his daughter's voice and you never even see the shot which like if you killed yourself that way oh yeah you would there'd not be blood actually... everywhere and it... well of course but you wouldn't actually register the bullet it moves so fast yeah, pro- oh, yeah so it was that i was like wow that's a really elegant and subtle way to handle this mm-hmm. given that you know they've done so many other horrible things and shown it but no it's just 
He he's sees, having a vision because he's Romani, and that's for the happens. record, he has been seizing this entire se- literal oh, seizures yeah. and visions, foaming at the mouth, which is why he thinks he has tuberculoma. So we'll come back to that. So he gets out of the wagon. He goes up to his daughter. And he's like, "Did Polly send you? Did Polly send you?" And she's just like, "No." And this is one of the part, one of the parts where I did not like their artistry, where yeah. when you could see the daughter standing next to him, hugging him. Her mouth would move while she's speaking, and then he could see another one, like, 10 to 15 feet away, and her lips did not move. She just stared at him. I hated it. I was like, why are there two girls here? Why is only one of them speaking to him? This is stupid. Whatever. And so he he eventually realizes, he's like, oh, I'm not dying. Or, like, that. I, I think he hears Polly's voice and his daughter's saying, like, you're not dying. Or, like... It's, it's all it's his weird. It's, it's all very his I'm pretty sure. weird. You know, it's he's having a vision type thing. And so he's like, I'm not dying. So he goes out and he comes across a newspaper. And before he picks up the newspaper and looks at it. No, to be clear, the newspaper oh. is part of the fire he has been burning because he's camping out as a Romani. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. I thought he was back in his office. I don't I don't remember. So he's, he's about to pick it up, and I turned to David, and I was like, oh my god, the doctor's a Nazi. He lied to him. Mm-hmm. And then he picks up the picture, and it's a wedding photo, and the doctor's in there, and the doc- was Hitler supposed to be there, too? Hitler's in the photo, yes. Hitler is in the photo, yeah. And uh, so the doctor's in there, and the second opinion doctor is also in the wedding photo. Yes. And so Tommy's just like, I don't have that. I'm not dying. Now, here's where it gets a little confusing to me slash weird. I am pretty sure he does not move his cart. Like, he, his cart is left where it is. Yeah, on fire. Burning down. Well, no, no, it's not on fire yet. Oh, you mean the one outside the doctor's office. I don't think he travels to the doctor's office. I think he literally had... That's where he was for some reason. That's how no, it read he was to on me. a hill. What are you talking about? He's still on a hill when they burn the cart. Okay, this is for those who haven't watched. He's on this beautiful hill with a beautiful view when he's about to kill himself, and then you know they're gonna find his cart and burn it and rake the ashes as is tradition and blah 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 blah. And I swear to God, it does. It's not clear to me that he drove the cart somewhere else because it's set up the. Ex- he got on a horse and left. The cart stayed there and burned down. It did not burn. Then I'm getting to the burning. He gets on a horse and leaves, and where he goes is to the doctor's place. And the doctor looks out his window and says, oh, those blah gypsies, you know, and tells his butler, go burn, get the gypsy out of here or burn down his cart. Then the guy goes to his car and Tommy accosts him and he says, surprise, I figured out you're friends with the Fuhrer. I'm not dying, am I? And, the, and there's a couple of plot holes here. One, he says, I'm not dying, am I? He says, no, basically we faked it. You're just suffering from guilt. Which doesn't make sense because he seizures. is yeah. having seizures. Like, if he were having just visions, but we're, we have literally seen him collapse, shaking, foaming at the mouth, naked. The, the bathtub is overflowing with water because yeah. he has like, passed out and had a seizure. I don't believe that can be from guilt. Now, maybe that's a point, is that he is sick, it's just not tuberculoma. Mm-hmm. And that's the double twist here. But either way, he... Yeah, ah, he's, li- he's going to survive. And so he shoots him in the head. No, he doesn't. Sorry. He threatens he to shoot him, and then he doesn't shoot yeah. him because he decides he's going to be a different person or who knows what, which is weird because if anyone had it coming. Um, yeah. And then he goes back to his cart, which the butler has lit, in, lit on fire while he's been doing this. We see him throw gas that all over. the butler? Yes, that was the butler because he, he tries to catch him, and then he looks at the cart burning, and, and there's... <laughs> shrugs and walks off because there's some sort of symbolism with now he and Alfie are both dead men who have come back and that's kind of interesting. But no, I, it's a weird oversight slash coincidence that he was like on the doctor's land planning to kill himself because of course the doctor would have found the cart and burned it before his friends could have found the cart and burned it, which he told his friends, I'll you know, Charlie will know where the cart is, he'll tell you and he'll come and burn It's just like... It really reeks of like either last minute changes or weird editing, um, or like I really think they shot the first scene where like he rode away from his cart to go find this doctor, and then 
they like shot the doctor scene later and were like, well, wait, what about the cart? We want to do this cool thing. Like, well, he'll just have camped on his land or something. Like, he can see the cart because he took the cart too. Or it makes no sense. It really makes no sense. And it bothers me because it's. I'll check later and see if I'm crazy and wrong and I misunderstood something big time, but like. That whole thing made no sense. Like, I thought it was Curly that set it on fire. It, we thought it was Curly, but it's, it's not, not because he chased it. It's the butler. And I was like, yeah, because I thought the butler was Curly. See, I, I, that was the only scene we ever saw him in. So yeah. I didn't recognize him, I guess. And it's just like, it makes no sense. Why mm. Why was he going to shoot himself on this guy's front lawn? I just, weak little things like that make this season worse, which is a shame because it's still got some beautiful stuff and some great stuff. It's just inconsistent. And I could totally believe, given the tragedy that occurred and the fact that it's a long-running show and there's a lot of meddling going on, that this is just, you know, production problems. Yeah. Like, some poor writer, is writer, editor, and team is stuck, like, trying to make this work when, like, everything is kicking them in the teeth. And I believe also COVID, of course, oh, was during... So... I'm completely willing to just be like, hey, this could not have been a more troubled time to shoot a, fi yeah. a, a show, and you literally lost a cast member. Yeah, one of the most I'm willing to let ones. it slide, but like, it's blatantly bad. <laughs> so I mean, maybe he actually got on, his, took his wagon out there. It just makes because the writing. I, I don't believe that he. There was no way he was there the entire time because when he went to walk to his daughter. There was just hills and grass everywhere. Well, the, uh, there yeah, was not a big. Well, no. House. The idea is that it's a huge mansion, and the guy owns acres, and so he's way out there. So, like, he's higher up on a hill and can see down, and he can't see up. Is I, my read of it. Mm. But uh, either way, it still makes it stupid because he gets on his horse and wi rides away from his ra wagon off screen to ride back when we're not looking and hook it back up and take the wagon with him and then set it up in the exact same way because it's still got all this memorial stuff. Because he couldn't sleep in it. Like, it just... None of it makes sense. There's no way that made sense. It's got to be production troubles. I know I've rambled about this a lot, but it was just such a jarring shame because they just done a really elegant, beautiful shot with that daughter thing, which is also weird. Like, why is he seeing his daughter? Like, you could just go, oh, it's the Romani thing, fine, whatever. But we're back to, is he actually sick? And like, oh, he just feels guilt, but then why did you have him have seizures? It's just... This doesn't feel I mean, thought can through. Can PTSD cause seizures? Because he could absolutely, he probably absolutely, no, he 100% oh, he had does. PTSD. He had way too many nightmares of shooting people and waking up in like skeletons and stuff. Uh, I mean, yes. it presents differently for different people. Yes, it can. So, okay, then I'm going with it was the PTSD. Then, okay, all right, so I'm wrong. That's, that, that one's, that one's there. But no, the whole, the rest of it is still weird. Um, uh, I am ringing. I should take this. Is it your mom? It's dad, just in case he found it. All right, so I Googled it. And yes, he, it was the, the doctor's manservant or whatever that set the wagon on fire. Mm -hmm. And it was within, like, the doctor was the one who said, go burn that. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of people were like, well, yeah, this is really stupid because, y yes, he could have moved it, but... It looked like, because I, I also just pulled up the scene and rewatched it, it looks like he's in the exact same location he was when he had the yeah. stuff with his daughter. And so people were like, yeah, you know, they probably just, they were rushed, whatever. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> my favorite comment was somebody was like, yeah, you know, um, you got to see the inside of it before the guy set it on fire and it looked the exact same as before. Right. So if he moves that wagon around and rearranges everything the exact same way every single time. Hmm. That's weird. <laughs> but. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, 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 like, uh, I, I knew I wasn't wrong on that one because, like, I, I kept looking for reasons to be wrong because I caught it pretty quickly and I'm like, well, no, that looks like the same view. And that was the butler. So again, production issues. See, I thought it. I thought it was curly. So yeah, but I. I whatever. We talked about this a little bit already. So, anyways, I'm production issues. Pretty, I'm yeah. pretty positive it's production issues. So, it's a shame. Um, it was still good. Like, there's a lot of really great moments in this season that have very good emotional impact. I'm a little annoyed that in previous seasons they brought back Alfie, you know, from the dead. 
because that was a great emotional impact, and they literally DBZ'd him back to life with one of the most, like... He was your favorite character. Why are you complaining? <laughs> because it makes him less of a good character if there's no stakes in what he did. Part of what I liked about him was the way that all ended, because, yeah, that makes sense that he would be the kind of person who would do that. And it's a little bit weird that now they're putting Tommy in the exact same situation of, you're a dying man making desperate plays, but oh wait, you survived your own death. So now you get to live on as a ghost. It's just, it feels, again, I really wonder if there are writing team changes or what's going on, because it just feels odd. But there's also some really good stuff. Um, like, one of my favorite lines on the entire show was when Tommy's son, Charlie, looks at Lizzie and he's like, can I go with you? And Lizzie was like, well, no, you have to stay with your father. And he was like, but you're more my ma than he ever was my father. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh! Yeah. <laughs> it was, you know. And so, you know, it's just, it's sort of sad because, like, it, like, ah, oh, this could have been so much better. But it's still watchable, you know. It's still better than I think a lot of TV in many ways. And, that, and, and again, I'm willing to give it a lot of slack because, like, COVID cast member death like that's a lot of yeah. stuff to juggle at once um i don't know it just feels very i'm really curious how this movie's gonna be you know oh what i read was it's supposedly supposed to be set many 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 years in the future that's even weirder because like person alluded to world war Two, so well, they're almost on the verge of that, but... I don't know. I'm just saying what I read. Because at the end of the show, it's also, there's this weird, well, wait a minute, we haven't solved the fascists. Which, like, granted, you can't solve the fascists. That's kind of the point. History is going to happen here. So I don't know if that's part of the point. And you definitely haven't solved the Jack Kennedy thing, which, again, maybe that's the point. Like, you know, you can't kill a U.S. senator. But the big thing that everyone was kind of hoping they would do, and I believe they said they wanted to do, which is now going to, of course, have been skipped or be skipped, is, well, if we're going to keep, you know, ramping him up and ramping him up and ramping him up, let's get um, Al Capone involved. Because mm. that would be really interesting to see, you know, the new world gangster versus the old world gangster. Because we've seen how he's dealt with, like, the old world gangsters and whatnot, but mm -hmm. now it would be a really, like, ah, oh, well, I'm from America, and it was an interesting thing to see a Kennedy instead, you know, but why... Uh, I just... I, I don't... Actually, is Capone the right era? Capone's, yeah, Capone's Prohibition, yeah. Yeah. So, in fact, we're, we've missed Capone, because they just ended Co Prohibition. So, I just... It, there's been a lot of baffling decisions. Oh, and then there's that shootout which also has baffling decisions. So there's this big shootout in the street um, where the main Peaky Blinder boys, like it's literally the old crew. Arthur. It's Arthur and the old crew from World War yeah. One, are going to take on the IRA, you know, in revenge for Polly. And once again, some brilliant stuff and some interesting stuff, but then some bafflingly stupid stuff. Of course it goes wrong, so they're fighting in the foggy streets of London at night. And one of these guys lets go with a machine gun, an actual mounted tripod machine gun, and annihilates an IRA guy with a rifle, just blasts him to pieces in a long projected burst. And I want to say 15 to 30 seconds later, a mom and her pushing her carriage and her two kids show up and like, no children, don't run, three kids, don't run away over there. And she's not saying, holy crap, run, we just heard gunshots, you idiot children, or like panicking. She's acting as if she's supposed to be an innocent person who's wandered into this. It would have worked maybe 30 seconds before where there's been some gunfire, but nobody, yeah. nobody would be like, oh, machine gun fire, or was that just thunder? Like, it... Yeah, and one of the kids runs over and picks up a, a shell. A shell! So it's <laughs> and, like, it's just... David and I, we, we, we literally laughed at the TV, and I was like, dude, if I was that mother, all three of those kids would be shoved into the carriage, and we'd be going the other way, and if that kid didn't want to get in the carriage, she'd be dead. All right, I have two kids. Bye, honey. Yeah, like... Like, are you kidding me? It was just... But unless they were deaf, which they weren't, 
<laughs> no. And there it's was such, no excuse. It was such a weird thing to do because if you wanted to do that scene of like, oh, civilians wandering in to remind us we're in London, not in the trenches of the Psalm, which is kind of maybe the idea there. You do that at the start, mm -hmm. and then when the gunfire goes off, you see them haul away, or they haul away, and then the gun, or they, they manage to wander away, and then the gunfire continues, so you mm -hmm. don't have to address the whole elephant in the room. Yeah. Like, it's just... I mean, it, it added nothing to the scene for me. There was no tension, because I was just like, yeah. kill the kid, whatever, so I don't know who this kid ridiculous is. ridiculous <laughs> at that point. And it's weird amateur hour stuff like that, that it's just like... You have gone five seasons with great attention to detail at points, and, and at least is. good enough attention to detail at other times, but it's like, what happened? What is going on? What writer didn't show up? Who got fired? What disaster happened that you had to turn this in the night before it was due because, well, we just have to do this, and or you spliced together footage? I have no idea. Like... Then they use mustard gas, which is a great scene, mind you. It's like a really clever way, and it's got some really interesting stuff going on. But then they kind of like take the masks off real quickly, and blah 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 blah, and like mustard gas in civilian streets. Like you get like granted, again, the idea that yes, everyone should have left after they heard machine gun fire makes perfect sense. Except you just had a scene where someone hadn't left because of the machine gun fire. So now we're back to who's dying from mustard gas. They were getting closer to the gunfire. That's what kills me. Like, really? I really wonder if this entire season is supposed to be like a fever dream or if Tommy just killed himself and imagined the rest of this. He's going to wake up in the movie with like, Tommy, you've been in a coma. We got the bullet out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be so Because that's the only way to, like, explain a lot of this. Like, which is a shame, because, again, it whiplashes from, like, wow, this is a really cool shot, or this is kind of a clever scene, or this is decent, to, like, who wrote this? Yeah. Why do they hate this show? <laughs> who, yeah. you know, like, oh, my, my son needs a job. What should he do? Lead writer. Like, who, what nepotism or... It just, it's so weird. It's yeah. so, so weird. It really was. Which is a shame, because again, it's got some good stuff, but like, yeah, full disclosure, oh my god, you know? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. And I feel like most of that's in the back half. Like, I don't feel like there was a lot of, like, this weird, where's your attention to detail, like, holy crud, who wrote this, you know, like rip off Transformers movie plot level stuff. Trans botters, you know, like it just I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know don't either. Know. I think that's all I got. Um it's a shame because it's a good show and it deserves something better. But uh that's what it got. That's that's what we've got. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't really have anything to add. I, I was just very proud that I realized the doctor was a sham before they made it obvious. Woo. Yeah, that was yeah, and that was a good plot point for what it's worth. Oh yeah. Especially since okay, PTSD and stress can cause seizures. Fine. All right. Cool. Um. Well, yeah. yeah, and we saw what he was seeing when he was seizing. Oh, yeah, it's always he's back in the it, trenches exactly, and it's the which bodies makes he's sense. climbed over. Because we both did say, oh, he's got PTSD. Oh, yeah. And then they were like, oh, you've got this thing on your brainstem. And we were like, oh, I guess that's what oh, that's what's causing it, not the yeah. PTSD. Yeah, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. I don't regret watching it. Yeah. I don't think I'll rewatch the last two seasons, though. I don't know. I just, I don't... Yeah, I don't know. It's... It's the law. It's the lack of potential, and again, it's that weird like whiplash of like someone else trying to finish better work and doing it under a rush, and like, oh well, we'll have a family walk in to add tension. Oh, that makes no sense here. No, families add tension. You know, Dude, like Arthur was my favorite of the brothers. There was already tension because I was like, oh my god, they're gonna kill him. He's he my took new a favorite. bullet at the start. Yes, he did in the arm. Yeah, in, in the, the arm. arm. But like, I was fully prepared for him to die there, <laughs> and then family, and I was like. What? This, what? Like, I, mm, it was dumb. Yeah. All right. I, I guess that's where we'll end it. Yeah, it's <laughs> not as fun as normal, but it's all I got. Like, it's such a conflicting feeling that it's been, like, a rough few weeks for everyone here. Um, so, 
Yeah, we'll just leave on that. Oh, we saw Meeplings. We had another Meepling sighting. He was he was ready to he threw down with the window. Like <laughs> Mrs. Meepling was there and he was not okay with another Meepling or another quail being near his Mrs. Meepling with his Mrs. Meepling, you know, the reflections. And he was going at it and made some cute noises as well. <laughs> um I agree. And then, agree. Those and then they went and dug noises. holes in the rocks. Yeah, it was kind of funny. So, you know, I'm sure there will be a meepling video. Yep. Blue. Yep. So there, happy ending. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that is the end of Lark's Foot Crochet Afghan Day 2. I don't know, whatever. I got three hours and 20 minutes of footage. Uh, I did not actually prepare for this. So, there, there we go. Whatever. Um, everyone has betrayed me. Everyone is on Meat Morph's side, except for Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Love you. You're my favorite. <laughs> everyone else. You disappoint me. I haven't heard him today or yesterday, though, so... Maybe that video was all that I needed to do. I, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. I just, I don't feel like crocheting anymore. I'm just like, I'm... I'm... <laughs> like, subscribe, share, comment. Oh, that's it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.